Okay, so everyone here has beliefs and values. There's nothing wrong with those, but those values and beliefs that are in place are, are pretty much a lens that shapes our entire world. Some of it came from our parents, some of it came from our friends, some of it came from our peers. And if we're not in control of that or aware of that, we're going to continue along the same path. If we try to implement change in our life in one way or another and we're not getting it, it's because the psychology underneath hasn't shifted. Like I'm sure a lot of you have taken a sales training course before. Sales training courses are great, but sales training is only as good as the psychology it sits on. Right? So what we're going to do is we're going to go through a process and we're going to start this daily conditioning process, and that's how you integrate it. That's how you shift your subconscious. And literally, a short amount of time every day, within weeks, within months, will radically change your psychology. And that's going to shift how you view the world. It's going to shift what actions you take. It's going to shift what opportunities you take. And it's going to shift how you even think. So the roadmap to Awesomeville, this is what our six weeks look like. Um, today, and we're basically going to focus on one section every week. So today, we're focusing on the identity. But what we're really focusing on is a new state, a new identity a new physiological state where you're going to be able to take more action in a more powerful state. Next week, we're going to focus on drive, on purpose, and creating a purpose that really drives you. It drives you so much that when you get tired or exhausted, you keep going anyway because this purpose is so important. We're going to really define that purpose. Week three, we're going to review patterns that are in place and changing those patterns so that you automatically start to get results at a much higher level than you do today, and results of your choosing. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll email out the deck afterwards. Hmm? Okay, um, we're going to talk about week four, the communication skills mindset. We're going to look about some people's beliefs about sales because everybody sells in one way or another. It's a good way to kind of, as we're growing our income, think about our sales mindset. And then week five, we're going to look at creating, creating leverage. Who is on our team to help us or who needs to be on our team? How do we find a team? And then six, we're going to look at more conditioning and never stop growing and how to continually move this process going forward. So any questions from anybody right now? OK. So this is a fact. If you give this course 100% of the effort, of the focus, of the assignments, of the daily conditioning exercises, if you do that, you will double your income in three to six months. You will, period. Because we are shifting that mindset. We're shifting that comfort zone. And as soon as that shifts, you'll do whatever it takes to get what you want. So we're going to shift that in a direction that you're choosing. We're going to get clarity on what it is you really want. And then once you have clarity, once you have that identity, you're going to do it. It's automatic. Automatic. So what I'm asking everybody to do is to play full out here. okay? And it really starts with a decision. So are you willing to, I love this is my favorite quote, are you willing to live the next few years of your life like most people won't so you can spend the rest of your life like most people can't? You know, are you willing to step up and play at that level and put in the effort, work those long hours, weekends, do whatever it takes to get it done? Because you put in that effort now, it will pay off long term. It's not like, hey, this is something I'm doing forever. It's something I'm doing right now for myself, for my family, for my children, to get out of this rat race, to get some financial abundance in my life. Because we can make as much money as we want. There's people out there that make millions of dollars every day. They've got the exact same resources. They've got a body and a brain. The difference is how you use it, right? So really, it's that decision. So the second question is, are you willing to condition and practice and work where, work when other people aren't? Do you guys exercise your bodies, you know? Exercise regularly? Well, do you exercise your mind, your emotions? Why not exercise those too? And that will shift everything. You know, and are we willing to really drop our old stories, our old ex excuses that come up? Because this course is going to make stuff come up. So when you feel an emotion coming up that says, that's bullshit, or no, or that's terrifying, or yeah, he's right, or if it's in conflict with me, just acknowledge it. And just play with me for a little bit. Because if something comes up, that means there's a block we're hitting. And because we didn't consciously choose to program our subconscious, we a lot of times have blocks in there or conflicts. One of the biggest blocks I've ever had was rich people are greedy. How can I make lots of money when I think rich people are greedy? Like, Where did that come from? Like, well, that's my dad's belief that came up. 
So when I ever had lots of money, I just kept spending it because I don't want to be I don't want to be greedy. Because you will do whatever you, whatever that identity is, you will your body will be in, in alignment with it. You cannot be in violation of what you believe yourself to be. So what we're doing is shifting what you believe yourself to be, so you can get the results that you really want. So when this stuff comes up, just acknowledge it. Get up and dance if you need to. Oh, that feels funny. Oh, I had a memory from my childhood come up just now. Oh, okay, that's okay. We can, we can, we can. You know, that's normal, and that's the process because we're kind of cleaning out the closet. So the results formula that we want to focus on, and 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 these three words right here will transform your life. If you took nothing out of this whole process except these three words, it will transform your life. When you want something or you're working on something, we normally build to-do lists, and to-do lists are awful because they never get done. There's no fulfillment, and you just keep getting stressed, and it gets longer and longer and longer. What most people are missing is clarity on what it is they really want. So when you are working on something, like for this class today, I asked myself, what do I really want? I wanted to create a class that brings value for everybody here and really gives them the tools to transform their identity and their financial income. Why did I want to do that? Because I want to bring value to my community, because I want to generate a valuable class for my peers in the community. I want to generate income for my family. I want to do this because I love coaching and I want to expand this business even more. And once you do that, this how is automatic. We usually always get stuck on how. How am I going to do this? When you know what and why, the how is automatic. It really is. Because you know what it is you want, you know why you want it, you're going to get it. Does anybody know how many banks Walt Disney was turned down by before he received money? It's like 90 something banks, right? It's like, he's at bank 85. Okay, I'm just going to keep looking. Where do you find 90 banks anyway? <laughs> Back in that day, right? I think it was in the 50s or 40s. But you know, it just really goes to show he knew what he wanted. He knew why he wanted it. He didn't care how. He was going to keep going until he find it, found it. We have that exact same skill set. We can model that behavior. And when we model successful, successful behavior, we don't have to create the process ourselves. And most of us think we have to create everything from scratch. We don't. Find a mentor, find a model, and you'll find a shortcut. So this right here. What do you want? Why do I want it? How am I going to get it? That is power right there. Gives you clarity, power, boom, those three words. So when you start your week, what do I want? Why do I want it? How am I going to get it? Because the why is where the purpose comes from. And the great thing is, again, when you get clear on what you want and why you want it, the how is automatic. You will find the how. But most people don't have the why. And the what should be, I would like to lose 10 pounds while eating pizzas every day <laughs> and, and within 30 days and have a great time doing it. So it needs to be very clear and measurable. The clearer it is, the clearer we can find it and go for it. Any questions from here? Any questions from the bridge? Okay. So our keys to success for this course, number one, just keep going, okay? The conditioning exercises we're all going to start doing to start this transformation process, they're, they're daily exercises. If you miss a day, it's okay. Just do it the next day, okay? And I'm not asking you to do hours and hours and hours. I'm just giving you what you need to make the transition. So just keep going. That's our motto. Just keep going, just keep going, just keep going. Never stop. Playful out. When we talk about these exercises of moving your body, you have to move your body. You have to jump up and down. You have to engage your voice because that's how you get your physiology involved to really start to shift that subconscious. If you just stand still and go, I'm, I'm happy, I'm happy, you know, like that, it's not going to work. You really have to move your body and get into it. That's how you trans change your state. Move your body. And we're going to do that today. So for the conditioning process, run all the conditioning exercises that we're going to give you. And basically, we're going to build a model today that you're going to run for the next week. And then every week after that, we're going to add a little bit to it, but it's going to be the same amount of time. And that process is going to condition you over time to shift your mindset, your mentality, your focus. And it's going to make a massive difference in your life. I will recommend the minimum requirements. You can always do more, and I encourage you to do more. Engage your body. Definitely, you always have to use your voice out loud. If you live with people who aren't in this, clo in this class, go in your office, close the door, and yell into a pillow if you have to. <laughs> Yelling at the top of your lungs is a great way to change your state, using that voice. And for this course, when we start thinking about these ideas and how we're going to create strategies for doubling our income, we want to get rid of the how first. Okay. The how will come. Make sure we get clear on the what and why. 
we all default to how. So we want to make sure we throw that out. And you will get out of this course what you put in. You know, get rid of disbelief. Just be playful. And know that the only thing really stopping you is you. The only thing stopping me is me. And the only thing stopping you from having everything you want is the story about why you don't have it. That's the Tony Robbins quote right there. So, so the transformation process is going to look like this. We are going to create and create and and real and, and for most of you, we're probably just going to reconnect with an old identity. An identity is a state that is already in you. We're going to define that identity. We're going to create leverage so we can change it. We are going to condition the new identity, and we're going to anchor it into our psychology with a physical move like that. Because doing that changes your psychology, literally. And it changes your, your, your biochemistry when you do that. And then we want to run it so it becomes your primary identity. And that's what the daily conditioning there. It will, you will get results that are an atmospheric in a year if you do this. We want to support that identity with new rituals and new patterns. And that's the conditioning process. And we want to create and implement new strategies here that we're going to in place to push ourselves to the next level so we get better results, better actions, more effective. Any questions? Anybody around the bridge, any questions? OK, so let's do a quick exercise here. What I want you to do is write down how much money per year you've made over the past 10 years. Start with this year, year 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and just quickly write down how much money you've made. You yourself, or if you're a couple, you're a couple. So go ahead and list down how much money you've made over that period. Yeah, on the bridge, let me know when you're done. If you don't remember, <laughs> just guess. If you remember more than that, go ahead and keep going. Or remember when it shifted, if you know when it shifted. I've written down a general idea. OK, thanks, Truda. Drew, do you need a piece of paper? Well, if you were to do it by yourself, you need a piece of paper. OK, <laughs> what about Rick, Cyril? Jenna, you done? Yeah? Yeah, I'm done. OK. Now, the next question here, we want to look at that. Have you seen any increase in Matt? major increases or decreases, more than 20% over the past 10 years. Okay. Level. Okay, so you dec decreased last two years. Yeah. Are you sure? Last two years. Jason, where are you at? Up or down? You're not an anomaly. <laughs> Okay, what about on the bridge, anybody? What's, what does your earning history look like over 10 years? Up, down? Okay, we've got pretty stagnant uh, in the room for the past 10 years for a few people. We've got up by about 5 or 10%. Um, what about on the bridge? I, I was not going to call you out by name, but anybody? Down. Up, down? Down and up, down and up. Down and up, OK. Anybody else on the bridge? Jenna, Rick, Sterl? And down. Down, what percentage? Oh, 80. 80% <laughs> down, OK. OK. Now, if we, if we look at, does anybody have a shift of more than like 20% up or down? Mine is only because I graduated college. <laughs> okay, correct. Somebody has a big shift since you graduated college. Okay. Right. Um, anybody, what's the what's the highest shift somebody's had? Somebody on the bridge had eighty percent down. Does anybody have seventy percent down? Anybody have? 
Did anybody have an increase off of like more than 20, 30 percent? Well, know. we had a 50 we had a 50 percent drop after 9/11. That was more than 10 years ago. Okay. And then, then we've dropped after. We, yeah, then we've recovered. Okay, 50 percent drop after 9/11. Okay. Um, does anybody on the bridge have an up increase? Yeah, probably Still twenty percent up. Still, you're, still, you're up sixty percent. So that's good. So the interesting thing of this exercise is you kind of look as you can kind of see our income is kind of stabilized. And the reason why we're ha having everybody take a look at this is because there's a comfort zone here, right? And we all are familiar with that comfort zone range, and we want to make sure that it, as our income drops, we don't reduce our comfort zone and justify the reason for being there. We have an expectation of how much we earn, and we keep doing that. Okay. Now let me ask. Let's look at the next question here. How much do your parents make, or did your parents make? So how how do your earnings compare with your parents? Anyway? I was making more than my father when I was 21, working two jobs. Okay. So on the bridge, we have someone making more than their parents at 21. What did you, you say, Jesse? Okay, twice as much as the parents. Okay, fair. Yeah, make more. Did anybody make the same as their parents did, or their parents made more? Yeah. Okay, so we have we have one person in the room who, whose parents have made more once in the past ten years. So. We also want to make, look at, because sometimes we pick up our beliefs about money from our parents. Like for me, I picked up a very <laughs> harmful belief about saving money, and I just discovered this in the past six months. I, I developed a belief that said, if you save money, it will be taken from you. So I always spent money, always. And I, and I had this memory come back when I was in high school, freshman year in high school, I had a job, I worked all summer long, and as a freshman, I didn't know where to spend money on, so I just went in the bank account. At the end of the summer, my first golf course job, I was like, I think I had $700, and I go to the bank one day, and the account's empty. And I'm like, where'd the money go? And since I was a minor, my account was attached to my parents' account. And my parents had taken the money without telling me, and, and used it. And it created this belief that if I save money, it will be taken from you. And I'm like going to be 40 this year, and I've never saved money in my entire life. And I'm like, I've made a lot of money, and I've grown, and I've, I've actually had times when I've tripled my income, and it was awesome, but I'm like, it, and I would get arguments with my wife about this, and like, no, we can't save, you know, because I was terrified it was going to be taken away. So as we start to go through this process, we want to just be curious about what comes up, because if something comes up, it may be something that causes conflict, and it causes you to self-sabotage. So. Now we're, next we're going to talk real briefly about, if you've been in the Robbins world, you've kind of heard this stuff, but we're going to turn fear into power. At the core root of everything we do, there are two forces. The need to avoid pain, which is instinctual, right, to avoid that pain, and the need to gain pleasure. Everything we do breaks down to those two things. And typically we'll do more to avoid pain or fear than we will to gain pleasure. So what we're going to do is link pain to the old identity and pleasure to the new, and it's going to help us make that shift. And the way we do that is we want to take that fear, that emotional fear, that pain that we feel, and we want to transfer that so that it's not blocking us from taking action, and instead it's the reason we're taking action. So we want to as we build our purpose on why we're making these shifts, we want to look at it and build a powerful purpose and use some fear like, oh my God, if I don't do this, this is what's going to happen. And it's a great exercise to leverage your subconscious to drive you in the direction you want to go. So, and the real power comes when you, when you stop avoiding fear and you use fear to your advantage because it's a powerful driver. <laughs> right? Powerful driver. So, so examples of that is you can imagine your life gone wrong. One of the processes Tony Robbins uses to change a, a belief is what he calls the Dickens process. 
like going through your life gone wrong because it gives you leverage. Uh, you can pretend that if you don't get this result, worse things will happen. You can think about things in your life that will happen if you don't change. Like, and you drag that out into the future. So if you're on the fence and you're like, well, I need to do this, but I'm, I just, I'm procrastinating. Well, if I don't do this, my life is going to get worse, and I could lose my job, and I could be on unemployment, and if I don't make change in 10 years, my wife may leave me, and I may be homeless. <laughs> That's drive, right? Or someone went up to my wife and kids and put a gun to their head and said, you double your income in 30 days, or I'm going to pull the trigger. Do you think I'd double my income? <laughs> so... Well, I don't want to focus on doom and gloom. I want to make sure that we're using leverage to our advantage. And that's kind of an extreme example there, but you know, use whatever you want to drive yourself out of the current situation. And the more painful your current situation is, the easier it is to take action. If you're in a comfortable situation, you're kind of at don't you don't have as much leverage created because when you're comfortable, you're comfortable. If you think about people who have made tons and tons of money and been massively successful in society, they had some of the worst upbringings they, that you can think of. Like Oprah was, was raped as a young daughter. She had a, was pregnant at 13 from being raped and lost a child in childbirth. And you know, they told her she had no future in broadcasting and look at her now, right? So, so if you're in comfortable, I'm asking you to create some leverage and some pain to move forward. So that will help. So. Let's do a quick exercise right here. So why must you change this identity that you have now that's been making the same amount of money you've been making for 10 years? Why must you change it now? I want you to write down real quickly, why must you change it now? And what will it cost you over the next 10, 20, or 30 years if you don't change it? Where will you be financially? Where will your relationships be? What will happen to your children? Where will they go to school? Where will you live? Will you be living with regret? So why must you change it now? And what will it cost you over the next 10, 20, or 30 years if you don't change it? If you keep playing with the same strategy that you've been using for the past, past 10 years financially? Who are you going to miss out on helping? Are you going to be a burden to society? Are you going to be unable to support your, your children, your family? Are you going to have to give up the things that you love to do? Are you going to have to give up on your dreams? Okay, let me know when you're done on the bridge. I'm finished. Okay, thanks, Truda. I'm done. Okay, thanks, Jenna. Done. Okay. Thanks, I'm Joe. done. Okay, is everybody here done? Then Neil, one more time. Okay. So this this is a good exercise to to get us motivated. It's not the most fun exercise, but motivation is good. So now. Let's, let's change this out. So let everybody stand up a little bit. Let's shake our bodies a little bit and get that, that negativity out. <laughs> Maybe do a high five. And if you're on the phone, high five yourself. Okay. Now, let's do this exercise the other way. Okay. So what we're going to do now, let's go the other direction. Let's imagine our income doubles in six months. This psychology shift happens and it becomes permanent and, and you start these conditioning exercises and you love them and you have fun and you do them every day and your income doubles in six months. 
And then imagine you, you, you learn the formula to continue pushing this process. So now what I want you to do is write down, go ahead and sit down here, write down what would your life be like if you doubled your income in six months. Then write, what will, where will you be in 10 years if you double your income every six months? What will your life be like? What will you do? Where will you go? Will you be living in the same place? If you double your income in the next six months, where will you be in a year? And if you continue this process going forward in 10 years, what would your life be like? What would you be able to do? Who could you help? What could you create? Where could you go? What things in your life would you never have to deal with again? So you double your income in six months. Where, what kind of car will you be driving in a year? Would you go on vacation? Would you hire a personal assistant? <laughs> How many hours a week would you be working? Would you lose weight? How would that impact your family? Okay, on the bridge, let me know when you're done. I'm done. All right, thanks, Jenna. When you're done in here, let me done. I'm sorry, was that Cyril? It was Rick. Oh, Rick, you done? Yeah. Okay, cool. Okay. Does anybody want to share where they'd be in a year? <laughs> be able to afford health care and get bills caught up today. Great. Anybody else in the room want to share? Sharon? Uh, a new car, a motorhome, you buy your house and purchase tickets to the your 50th anniversary with all your family. Great. Great. We one about you. Okay, maybe somebody, um, so financial freedom, more better work-life balance. Um, how about somebody on the bridge, where would you be in 10 years if, if you doubled your income every six months? I'd have my home in Hawaii. Home in Hawaii, <laughs> nice. <laughs> where else would you have homes? I have Mexico, actually. Anybody else on the bridge want to share? I would okay. be uh, giving money towards uh, underprivileged children, help them in their arts and uh, sciences. Yeah. Giving money to underprivileged children and helping them with arts and sciences. Yeah, the schools, rather, with the arts and sciences for public schools. How does it make you feel to be able to do that? Wealthy. Um, wealthy. Spiritually, spiritually wealthy. Spiritually wealthy. That's excellent. Good. Good. So. So this is a good exercise to really kind of, so we're looking at two options here, right? <laughs> Which one do you want to take, right? So, and really, is it a decision to do that? So right now, let's do another quick exercise. And watch here, hold on a second here. We're going to skip this one slide. And what we're going to do is we're going to go over to the state exercise right now. So everybody, um, put, your, put your pens down, and we're going to stand up here. So. One of the things, this is one another quote from Tony Robbins that I like, is the strongest, strongest force 
in the universe is a human being's need to live consistently with this identity. So we want to make sure as we start to shift that identity, we're doing it the right zone. So real quickly, a, th a comfort zone is a thermostat, right? So we've got these thermostats, these comfort zones that are holding us in place. And what we're going to do is we're going to start to shift that by creating a state within our body. And as we create that state, we're going to start to shift. Um, it's a personality, basically, because we all have different personalities, if, if, you, if you'd like to call it that, the happy, sad, motivated, depressed, angry, you know, married, husband, mother. Those are all identities. And there's, our bodies are different. Our focus is different. Our language is different. So what we're going to do now is we are going to tap into that same energy in our body so that we can harness this power of this new identity. And once we do this process, you can you have this state in you. And, and most of you, we're probably going to be tapping into a state you already have. And if you don't have a state, we're going to make one up. So, and what we're going to do is we're going to practice this state over and over again. And the more we practice it, it's going to become who we are. And it's going to become a more resourceful state. It's going to be, take more action. It's not going to procrastinate. It's going to be focused. It's going to be clear. And it's going to be individual to everybody on here. So during this process, you need to say out loud what's going on. And, if, if, and, and when I ask you questions, when you feel stuff come up, whatever comes up is the answer. So don't judge it. When I did this first exercise for, for my coaching questions, some, some statements, these statements are just triggers, right? My trigger for my coaching state starts out with no shit Sherlock, which <laughs> I think is really funny, but it makes me laugh and it puts me in a curious state. So when, when the, if, if a word comes up that's funny or something, that's what it is. So don't filter it, okay? And as we go through this process, we're going to create this identity and we're going to go into it over and over again. So there's three components of this state. One is your body. And your body is the easiest way to shift the state. If you are unable to shift your state tomorrow, next week, you're trying to shift it and it's not happening, you need to move your body more. The number one way to shift the state is to move your body, number one, hands down. And if it's not shifting, you need to move your body more. If you need to, do, to flinch all the muscles, if you need to jump up and down, you need to go, yes, like this. You need to do push-ups, sit-ups, you need to run. That will shift the state. So if you have something come up that's negative in your life, financially, emotionally, that just hits you in the gut, and you're just, oh, move your body. Put your chest, shoulders back, head up, smile. That will start to shift it, okay? So it's physiology, it's focus, and language. And we're going to go through that today. So I want everybody to close your eyes right now, and I want you to move your body a little bit and just be comfortable and close your eyes and really think about that vision that you just had about doubling your income in six months. And really think about that doubling your income every six months for the next 10 years. And as you start to see that happen, let's say we fast forward 10 years. Keep your eyes closed. You fast forward to 10 years from now. You kicked butt in the six weeks. And you literally learn this process to transform your income over and over and over again. Now imagine you're standing 10 years from today with that vision, living that vision. Think about your body right now. How is your body standing? You're in that state 10 years from now. You've got that financial wealth, spiritual wealth. You've got houses all over the world. You've got what's really most important in your life has actually happened. So if you're in that place right now, just let your body move how it would move in that time. And really think about it. And if you're having trouble getting to that spot, just pretend you have a magic wand that you could wave and make it happen. So if that magic wand happens and you really live in that life, just think about how your body feels. Are your shoulders back? Are your shoulders forward? Is your chin up? How are you breathing? Really pay attention to your body right now. Is there some movement? Are you on the ball of your toes? Are your hands in front of you? Are your fingers moving? Is your chin up? You're at that place 10 years from now, and you, you made it happen, and you've got financial freedom. You're working however much you think you should work. You may not be working at all. You may be financially free, so you're in that spot. Where's the weight on your feet? Is it on the balls of your toes? Is it on your heels?
as you feel the body, think about, look, scan your body really quick and see if you can find any unique physiological movements. You know, are you, are you on the balls of your feet? Is your weight moving back and forth? Are your hands in front of you? Are they behind you? Is there any tension on your face? How are you breathing? And if your chest, shoulders aren't back and your chest is up, and if you're having trouble getting into this state, stick your shoulders back and push your chest up, chest out, chin up. And you're in that place. You're living in the future. You're in the future and you've made everything happen. You've actually started teaching other people how to do this. Now, when you're in this place, think about what is the truth? What is the truth right now? And it helps if you say it all out. Is the truth is I can do anything? Is the truth I did it? Is the truth I'm unstoppable? The truth is I'm on fire? So whatever your truth is, say it out loud. And don't worry, everybody else is saying it out loud too. So on the count of three, say out the truth. So we're going to go one, two, three. The truth is I can do anything. The truth is I'm unstoppable. The truth is I was meant for this. The truth is this is more, I did it. The, the truth is this is my purpose in life. The truth is it's easy. What is the truth? The truth is all that other stuff was just was just what built me up to this. The truth doesn't matter. That, I'm sorry, that, that old stuff doesn't matter. This is the truth. This is what I know to be true. This is what I'm capable of. And imagine that you're in this place, and you're living your life, and you've had that massive financial abundance, and you've helped everybody around you. You're in that place, and you know how your body's feeling. Do a quick scan. What three emotions were most powerful for you? What three emotions helped you do this? Were you focused? Were you driven? Were you successful? Were you courageous? Were you unstoppable? Were you brilliant? Figure out what those three words are. So you've got those three words. Those three words are, are the three characteristics how you describe this state. And for a second now, we're going to imagine a time in our life when we were all of those things. So if you were focused and unstoppable and on fire, or confident, focused, powerful, assertive, courageous. So the way you're feeling right now with those three words coming up, think about a time in life when you felt that way. If you were in sales, did you close a big deal? Did you get funded for your business? Did you get married? Did you do something? Think about a time in your life when you were that stage and let your body move that way how it was too. Were your shoulders back? Was your head up? Scan the body again and really think about the movement. And as you were feeling that stuff, what was that truth again? The truth is I did it. The truth is I'm unstoppable. The truth is I am unstoppable, focused on fire, whatever those three words are, repeat those and see what happens. And what we want to do is we want to imagine that we're in this state and we have our jacket that we wear. Maybe it's a cape. <laughs> maybe a cape, maybe a jacket, whatever is appropriate for you. And somebody hands you this and your name is on there, but it's not your real name. It's not your real name. It's, it's not your birth name anyway, but it, it, let's say it is your real name. So if you look at that jacket that somebody hands you or cape, what is the name that comes up on there? You take a look at it, and you're like, oh, yeah, that's who I am. What is that word? What is that name? Because basically this is the name of that new identity. It could be a superhero. And this is really who you are. You know who you are. And as you practice going into that state, you're going to own that identity. And this is the identity where you're going to be unstoppable, and you're going to own those three emotions in your body every day. Does anybody have some names? Let me hear a name. Benton, do you have a name? Mr. Incredible. Awesome. Who else? Sharon, do you have a name? OK. Well, keep fo just focus. Just, anybody else have a name? Simple Winner. Good, good. Anybody on the bridge have a name? 
Rick, you have a name? Jenna Stroll? Rockstar Jenna. Rockstar Jenna. The making awesome. happen man. <laughs> I'm sorry, repeat that one? The make it happen man. The make it happen man. Awesome. Good. So as you're Mr. Incredible and the make it hand and the simple one and the one simple winner, think about how that feels. You've got this process. So this is the state we want to practice in. Now, if you don't have a name, just make one up. Who are you? I'm the butt kicker. <laughs> I'm the take name taker. And let's imagine that you've got your cape on, because <laughs> you wear a cape now, and you're out for a walk, and you've got your iPod, and you're thinking about those truths, and you're, you're listening, and you're like, yeah, the truth is I can do it. The truth is I can do anything. The truth is I'm unstoppable. I'm on fire. And as you're in that state, you're listening to your iPod. Your iPod starts skipping. And it starts skipping on one track, on one lyric, one line, on a few simple phrases. And it starts repeating it over and over again. And you don't care that it's skipping because you love it. And you think about that phrase, and all of a sudden you start chanting that phrase over and over again. And as you're chanting that phrase, you just you start owning it, like, I'm Mr. Incredible, oh yeah. Or I'm on fire, unstoppable, and I'm on fire, oh yeah. Or I was meant for this, oh yeah. Or I'm meant for this. What is that phrase that keeps going? What is that phrase? And imagine it going over and over in your head again in your head. And you know every time you put on the cape, it's like an anthem that starts playing. Does anybody have, know what that lyric is? What is it? I want more. There you go. What else? Pamela, do you have one? I can do this. Good. Drew, do you have one? Helpful to many. Good. Benton. Freedom. There you go. Jesse. Which one? Jukebox Hero. Awesome. Sharon, do you have one? If you don't have one, just pretend you do. Just pretend. It'll come. Okay? On the bridge, what do you what do you got? Anybody? Rick, what do you have? What's your what's your what's there? We Nothing. are the champions. We are the champions. There you go. Gary, what about you, Jenna? This girl What was that? This girl is on fire. This girl is on fire. Good. 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 Okay, now I want everybody to open their eyes and go ahead and sit down and write down those three emotions. Write down the three emotions, write down the name, and write down the phrase. Write down the three emotions that, that you came up with. Write down the, the name, and write down the phrase. Okay, on the bridge, let me know when you've got those. Got those? Okay. I'm good. Good. Got them, Jenna. Okay, good. Okay, sir, all thanks. Anybody have trouble with getting these things? Okay, which one do you have trouble with? So, did you come up with a name? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good, good. 
Did you come up with a phrase like I am positive me or positive me rules or? Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Good, good. I am the jukebox hero of seeing on the stage. So we all visualize whether we say it or not. So you did visualize, so that's great. You got something. If you don't know what it is, you can just make one up. If you have if you had one of the bonus one on one sessions with the course, you can do it on that. We can walk I can walk you through it one on one too. Um, but this is, this is kind of the, the, the beginning of this foundation. And what we want to do is we want to practice going into this state. And the, the way to practice going into the state really is start out by moving your body and jumping up and down and really think about those emotions. Starting with the emotions is, is, the, is the greatest way to do that. Um, the emotions or the name or the phrase, once you, once you start doing this, it's going to be automatic. But if you're struggling getting back into it, start out, what is the emotion? Okay, it was you know, happiness, excitement, and fun, or focus, diligent, and purposeful. And then think about a time in your life when you felt those things, and that will create that state, because there is a time in your life you have felt these emotions before. If you've ever ran into somebody who they said, oh, I wish I could just be the same way I was five years ago. I wish I could be that way. And the truth is, you have that exact pattern in you. You've, been it, you've done it before. And what it's been replaced by is a different state and a different pattern that is being run. So when you shift that pattern to that other one, you have it in you. And it starts with your body. Oh, well, I, was, I started out like this with moving, and then I remember my chin went up and my shoulders went back. And then I was kind of moving on the balls of my feet, and my hands were moving a little bit, and I was rubbing my hands together. Because there's a trigger there. And as you start to do that process, you're going to notice that these positive states are going to be very similar in their physiology. My excited state, my passionate state, my gratitude state, they're all relatively similar, but there's one unique, there's usually one unique differentiation, like there may be a slight tilt on my head in one, or I maybe have an arm pulled in, because most of those states are going to have good posture, you're going to be breathing well. So you want to kind of be curious to see what is the unique trigger, because once you find that unique trigger, it's like, oh, I just go like this, I tilt my head to the left, and boom, it fires that state off. And as you practice this, I'll answer that question in a second, and when you practice this, you want to make sure that when you first do it, you just pretend it works right away. Because every time you do it, you strengthen the muscle. And if you could actually hook me up to a doctor right now and I, make, and I change my state, you would actually see a change in my physiology. Um, I've done these over and over again, so it literally changes my physiology. Like I can go to, to my excited peak state, and then I can just go to like gratitude. Like, it just changes everything. See? So, and those are states that are always in us. So what we want to do is we want to practice it. When we practice them, the more it becomes normal and the more it becomes conditional. And we're basically practicing our emotional muscles is what we're doing. And we're creating a, a process so we can fire off these resourceful states so we get better results and we take better action. Okay? Questions? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So the question was, if we were in this state before, what causes us to come into it was a, a different state was triggered, you know. And states, or it could be an anchor that could have been created or triggered. Have you ever had a time where you listen to a song from your past and it all of a sudden triggers an old emotion? So any time that we are in a highly emotional state, we can create a trigger. So if you're getting in a fight with your spouse and the song is on the radio, then all of a sudden the song comes on the radio and you get home the next day and you get mad at yourself so you don't know why. It's, we, we, it, it's how you set a trigger. It, triggers are created. And it's simply an anchor. It's, it's a reaction that happens. And the thing is our bodies are, are that programmable. So what we want to do is we want to start programming, programming them in ways that benefit us. So if you have those anchors where you wear one, we can, there is a process to break those so that you can change that. But the best thing you want to do is focus on building this peak state. So you've got these three emotions. You've got the install. It starts with your body. Boom. I'm jukebox hero. Boom. And that phrase is your powerful phrase to do it. And if you're having trouble getting into it, run in place, jump, do sit-ups. And that's kind of what starts it. 
And then when you start to get into that state, just the first few times you do it, just before you do it, imagine this is going to be even more powerful than ever before. Boom. And just pretend. Because when you pretend, it will happen automatically. If you're doing the state thought change to test it, that's when you bring in doubt. So you want to make sure that when I'm changing my state, it just happens. And this is the first time you've done it. And we did it in a group section, so you didn't get out, out as out loud as, as we normally would have liked. But it will work. This is the foundation, right? So you're just going to keep working on this state. And really, and it will feel great to be in a state because it's an awesome state. You're going to be resourceful, excited, happy, on fire. You want to spend as much time as you can here. And then you actually can then go create other states. Maybe when I'm talking to, when I'm in front of people speaking, isn't it the exact state, state that I'm when I'm talking to my wife or when I'm one-on-one -on -one working with somebody. So you can actually go in and, and, and trigger different states, an emotional state, a loving state, creative state through the same process. It's like, what were the emotions that I was feeling for that state? And what did my body move like? When I won my coaching state, I kind of go, hmm. Cross my legs, lean to the side, looking down. My brow kind of comes down a little bit. And as you pay attention to that, literally, it's, 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 a, it's a trigger. It's a program. So whatever you're just standing there, you start to do that, it triggers the state. It really does. So any questions about this so far? OK. So for those of you who had one-on-one -on -one sessions, if you want to schedule those via the links that I sent out, we can do that. And you can, we can practice this technique even more. Um, but it all starts with those three things. And I'll send out a follow-up email later today. So I jumped around in my deck in a bit. Here, let me double check. And we're almost out of time. So here are the assignments for today. So what we're going to be doing is working on our emotional fitness, our mental fitness. We work our bodies out, right? Let's work out our minds. Okay. So what we want you to do is 30 minutes a day in the state. So we're going to start with 30 minutes a day. And if you want to do weekdays and take weekends off, you can. But I want you to do at least 30 minutes a day. Because as the weeks progress, we're going to add stuff into this process. And this process is going to be a powerful centering point throughout the day. So if you're stressed or overworked or tired at the end of the day because you're not taking breaks, this 10 minutes is going to be great. So you can take 30 minutes one time. You can take two, two 15-minute breaks during the day or take 10 minutes three times a day. Three times a day works great. First thing in the morning, take 10 minutes, take 10 minutes at lunch, and take 10 minutes. And I don't believe that anybody here can't find 30 minutes in a day. <laughs> if you can't find 30 minutes, go back to the reasons why you're doing this, right? <laughs> this is how the shift happens. It's a little every day, a little every day. So what I would do is go tomorrow morning, wake up, and the best way to do this is to take a walk, really take a walk. So. So get into your new identity. Start out with, you know, jump up and down a little bit. And if you can go back into that state, think of the name. Say the name out loud. Uh, my name is Thor. That's who I am. I'm Thor. <laughs> That's my state. So I say that name, it changes my physique. my posture change when I said that? It, that? I'm Thor. So if you've got that name, go for it. If you don't have that name yet, just go by the emotions. And the name will come. Say, you know, my name will find me. Because we want that name, that there's a name that's going to come up and it's going to power you. And then go into that state and go for a walk. And on that walk for 10 minutes, you're just going to be in that state going, I'm awesome, I'm awesome, I'm awesome. Or whatever that, whatever that line was, I can do anything. I can do anything. I can do anything. I can do anything. And just own it in every cell of your body. I can, I can, I can do it. Whatever that phrase is. Because that's your anthem. The more you say that, the more you believe it. We're starting to reprogram your subconscious. It's you do this for 30 minutes a day for a week, you're going to feel like a different person next week. I guarantee. So just commit to doing this. 10 minutes, three times a day. You, the breaks are going to be good for you anyway. <laughs> we all work too much and don't take breaks. So go for a 10-minute walk three times a day. Get some fresh air. So any questions about this? OK. The second part is I want you to go through this deck 
and answer all the questions that have the word exercise in them. So start back from the beginning. I'll email out a copy of this today. Start from the beginning and go through and make sure that you've answered all the ones that we asked in class today. And then I want you to go through these questions here. Actually, which slide is this? And here are some questions about. Let's see. There it is. Okay. Here are some questions here about kind of actions and what you do. So let's say you compare yourself to your peers. Question one is, what do you do differently than people who make just half of what you do? So if you are a salesperson or you're uh, a realtor or you're a business owner, what do businesses do who make half as much as you? And then what do businesses that make 50% more than you do? And what do people who make 100% more than you do? And what do people who make 1,000% more than you do? What do they do? What's different? So answer those questions and start to just guess. Someone who makes 100% more than you is probably doing this, this, and this. And if they're making 1,000 more than me, oh, they got a team of people, and those team looks like this, and they probably have these people. So go through these exercises here. Go through the whole deck. Uh, just review that to make sure all you can see that the title of the slide says exercise. So make sure you answer those out in your journal. And then go for the walk, 30 minutes a day. If you want to do it while you're doing cardio exercise, you can do that too. 30 minutes a day of in that state. And then take some notes about that process. How does it, how is it working? What's happening? What changes are you seeing? Okay. Any questions? Questions from the bridge? OK, everybody. I'm going to wrap this up then. We're going to, um, the recording will probably be available, be available in 48 hours. If you guys want to jump on at 6 o'clock, you're welcome to as well. You can watch this again. But the real key, the, the number one key for this whole six-week course is the state that we're creating right now. So you want to spend time in that, spend more time in that. And the more time you spend in it, the more time you'll be coming. OK? All right, everybody. We will wrap it up now. Thanks on the bridge. Thanks, Jason. All right, Cheryl. Thank you. All right, take care. Bye.